What's going on growers? It's James Prigioni coming to you live from Jersey. Today I'm going to show you how to easily build your own terraced raised bed for your patio or garden. Let's go! The idea is to end up with two planting areas that are four feet wide and two feet in length, but we can't just make it four feet wide, the raised bed, because we're going to be putting these caps on it, just like I have in this raised bed here. So we need to account for the width of these. I'm going to put a cut list in the description to give you guys an idea of all the length of boards I'm gonna be using and cutting, and I'm also gonna describe it more as the video progresses. For this raised bed, we're going to be essentially building two rectangular boxes, and then taking a smaller one and placing it on the top. For these raised beds, I decided to go with two by tens right here. And I needed a two by 10, one at 64 inches and another one at 52 inches for the length and the width. But I couldn't find any two by tens that were like eight, uh, six feet long. They only had ones that were eight feet long. So what I did was go to the people at Lowe's and ask them if they could just take a 12 foot two by 10 like this and just cut it in half for me. So that's what they did for free. In total, I needed seven pieces of these two by tens. So I just had them take four two by tens that were 12 feet long and cut them in half. But if you already know your measurements, like I'm gonna put down in the cut list, then you could just have them cut to the perfect measurement right off the start. Like this one here for the first length, I'm gonna cut it at 62 inches. I have my measurement at 62 inches. Now I just put this square up to bump up against it. This way I get a nice straight cut because I'm not a professional carpenter. That's cut at 62 inches. We're gonna do the same thing for the other side. We have the length of both of them cut. Now we're just gonna get the width and that's gonna be 52 inches. So we'll mark that and cut. We're gonna cut this and then do the same thing for one more of them and then start putting our bottom box together. I just finished cutting the second piece at 52 inches. And if you're not gonna follow my exact measurements, I wanna to explain to you a little bit why I couldn't just cut this at 48 inches. So we wanna end up with 48 inches in width, which is gonna be four feet, but I couldn't just cut this at four feet because first we have to account for the fact that I'm gonna be bumping this on the inside. So we, what we have to do is take those 48 inches and subtract an inch and a half from this side and an inch and a half from this side, which is three inches. So we take that 48 inches, we subtract three, that gives us 45 inches. Then we also have to account for the fact that we're gonna be putting these rails on. So when I put this rail on here, each rail is gonna be three and a half inches. So we then have to add three and a half inches on each side. So we take that 45 inches that we're left with and add an additional seven inches, which gives us 52 inches. So we put the rail on this side and the rail on the other side, and I'll show you, it'll end us, end us up with 48 inches on the inside. And that's what we want, 48 inches right there. And it's not absolutely perfect just yet because I haven't connected all the pieces together. We're gonna do that now. Now, I'm gonna start attaching this all together. I'm going to make sure that the 52 inch one is the one that bumps into the 62 inch one. And to attach it, I'm just gonna use these right angle clamps. It makes it really easy if you're on your own. I got this one attached, it looks good. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other corners and this would be a lot easier if you did it on a flat surface. I'm just doing it on the ground here to give you guys a better visual. I have the right angle clamps on three sides. I'm just gonna put this one on the fourth side and this isn't completely necessary. It just, like I said, makes it easier and it makes sure that you get some good right angles. So we're gonna attach this and then start screwing together. That looks good like that. And to attach everything, we're gonna be using two and a half inch deck screws and they always come with this extra bit, which is convenient. So this is the right bit we're gonna be using for it. And we're gonna make sure that we're pre-drilling before we actually drill into the wood because we don't want any splitting. We're gonna go with four uh, screws in each corner. We're gonna start at the bottom here so I can pull it all together while I'm doing it. And this is the countersink bit too, which uh, makes it a lot cleaner too. So that the screws will sit nice and flush into the wood. So let's get the first one in. Making sure that we're accounting for the bottom, making sure it's all level. We'll do the same thing, three more. We're gonna do the same thing on other three sides. There's the final screw in right there. The bottom box is all finished being built. Now I'm gonna grab two of these two by tens and we're gonna build this top box. So the top box measurements are gonna be just a little bit different and I'll show you why. If we did the same size as we did for that bottom box, then it would be on the inside like this and, and we don't want that. We wanna make sure that this extends the whole length so we're getting the overlap over top here. So all we really have to do is just measure the distance 
from one side to the other for this top box, which is gonna be 55 inches. So we're gonna cut two pieces at 55 inches of this two by 10. So let's just mark this at 55 inches, cut it and do the same thing for one other. We have both those pieces cut at 55 inches. Now let's just throw them up here, make sure they're perfect. This one's gonna be in the back. This one's gonna be in the front here. So this is how the back side's gonna look. You can see we got that overlap there. Now, we want this, the distance, the planting area in the inside here to be 24 inches. But just like before, we have to take that 24 inches and then subtract an inch and a qu quarter, an inch and a half and an inch and a half, which is three inches. That'll give us 21 inches. Then we have to add back the seven inches because we're gonna have two pieces that are three and a half inches. So we need to make a piece in the center here for a total of 28 inches. So let's just mark that 28 and then cut two pieces. Both those pieces are cut at 28 inches. Tuck's over here watching me. He gets a little afraid of the saw, but he still wants to be out here with us. Right, boy? He's got a little dirty nose. He was digging a spot before. Making sure he's got a nice spot in the shade. Getting some sun now. But we're gonna line this up right here, and we're just gonna put this box together right on top of the other one. And I'm gonna attach it the same way I did the other box. There we go, we've got that last screw in. We're just gonna take these off. And then we've got the top part built. It's not attached yet, but we're gonna attach it after we bring it into the location. Now I'm just gonna show you a little bit about how we're gonna be putting it together. We're gonna have these caps at the top and these caps provide a few different, a different uh, good things about them. One of them is that it's gonna lock everything together. So it's gonna lock all these boards together, making it much stronger. It's also gonna be really nice for when we're working. We could just come over here sit on the cap like this and work inside of our bed. So it's got a bunch of different things that it's really nice about. So this is how we're gonna be setting it up. We're gonna have that cap up there. We're gonna have another cap right here. Then we're gonna have this cap going this way. I still have to cut all of them like that. And then I'll show you how we have a distance in the center. This cap is gonna be over here. And then when you come in close, you'll see, by putting these caps on top, it's gonna to give us our two foot spacing, two feet on the inside, and then four feet on the inside here. So that's gonna give us our perfect size so we can do a nice square foot gardening. The same thing is gonna be going on on the bottom. We're gonna take one of these boards, these two by fours, we're gonna lay it right in here like this. Then we're gonna take another two by four and put it in here like this. And again, the same thing, we can sit on the edge. We can put our seeds up here. It just makes everything super convenient. And that's gonna give us our two foot spacing on the inside. And then after we put the caps on the other side, the four foot spacing over there. So if you wanna save some money and you don't wanna put the extra work in, you don't have to put these caps on the top. I think it just makes it look so much nicer. It makes it more convenient to work with. And overall, I just think it's definitely worth it. So we're gonna get these all measured and cut, and then we're gonna start moving the bed into the location. So for the top cap, it's gonna be the same as the length here. It's gonna be 55 inches. You don't even have to measure if you don't want to. You can just put this board at the edge and then just mark it right here. So we're gonna do that for this cap and then that cap. Then we'll just measure the, di the distance between these two right here. So let's measure this at 55 inches and we're gonna be cutting four of these pieces at 55 inches. We have those four pieces cut. So now we're just gonna bump them up here. And these were eight foot pieces. So what's left over, we're gonna be able to use as these side pieces here. So we'll bump those up like that. That's how that one's gonna go. This one up here. We'll attach them and then we're going to measure this piece and cut that. I'm actually not going to attach it just yet because I need to bring the box into the location. I'm just building it here so you guys can see it easier. So let's just get this distance from here to here. Looks like it's gonna be 24 inches. So we're gonna need four pieces at 24 inches. So let's measure this at 24 inches and then we're just using these scrap pieces from what was left over from before. There we go, that's the final piece cut. And this whole thing could have been easier if you just have a drop saw, but I like to just use uh, 
circular saw like that and just a couple of drills to show you guys that you anybody can really do this you don't need amazing tools in, it in order to build like your own garden bed so we're going to put all these pieces this is how they're all going to go in this section here so we've got all these four pieces cut now what we're going to do is we're going to bring this whole bed in pieces over to the location that i'm going to be actually planting in because i don't want it to be super super heavy when i bring it over Let's just get this piece in the bottom piece first and this is the location where i'm going to be building the bed so we're in the back of the food forest right here but i have this concrete pad back here and i'm not really using for anything so i figured let's build a raised bed that we can put on a patio to get the utilization of the space so you can see we're still getting some good sun in here in this location so i've measured it out that's why i built this size bed so let's just get it on here stage it and then start putting it all together so this is essentially how it's going to be we're just going to kind of match the pad here and then you'll notice that the pad is actually super unlevel and there's spots where if i just put soil into this bed right now it's just going to drain out the bottoms like under here so what we're going to do is have to level this out then i'm going to build this kind of little kind of basket system underneath here to make sure the soil doesn't drain away i'm going to start by taking some hardware cloth attaching them to the inside and then using landscape fabric over that i'll show you now i forgot to mention before i build that hardware cloth basket on the inside i'm just going to linseed oil this and all the other pieces this is going to help preserve the wood and it's also going to give it that nice look on the outside so we're just going to be liberal with the linseed oil do the top two and then flip it over and do all the other pieces i have all the pieces linseed oiled and they're basically all good to go now i'm going to take you inside we're going to build that cloth basket at the bottom and then we're going to attach everything together now we're inside the bed here i'm going to take this hardware cloth and just run it along the bottom and almost make like a little basket let's just open this up first we got this all unraveled here now, what I'm gonna do is just take this piece, lay it out, and I'm essentially just gonna cut it in half because this is 10 feet, and my distance from this side to the other side is 55 inches, so it should be perfect with a little overhang. Looks like this guy wants to be part of the video, huh, boy? Let's measure this, though. Exactly five feet. So that's gonna be about right here. I'll mark it and then start cutting, right, like that. We have that piece cut. Now we're gonna step on the inside and I'm going to cut two of these corners so I can fold it on the inside of the bed as well. So I'm just gonna cut at one of these corners here. And then this piece here, the width is 36 inches. So two pieces will give me 72 inches. This whole bed is 62 inches. So that gives me about 10 inches extra. So if I want, I could do four inch overlap here and that gives me three inches on each side. So we're gonna go with that. So what I did was bend about four inches here then I folded those corners over there. Next, what I'm gonna do is just take these screws right here and they've got washers on them. I'm gonna screw it right into there, make it nice and easy for me. And it comes with a bit as well right here. So let's get that on and get some of it attached. I have inch and a quarter screws here too, so it doesn't go through the whole board. I'm gonna put one at the top. Actually, I'll start one at the bottom here. And then I'll put another one at the top. If you want, you could use the uh, U-nails, the poultry nails, but I find this to be a lot easier. Now I'm just gonna screw this corner one in. And then I'll screw this other side into the wall right there. That'll make my corners all nice. And I just wanted to mention again, this is only really necessary if you're in a situation like I'm in right here, where the concrete is so unlevel. If you're in a regular garden, then you don't really have to do any of this bottom stuff here. And if you have really flat concrete, you may not even have to do this. I got this other side in here, and I'm not too worried about like reaching in and cutting my hands either, because I'm gonna have the cap on the side. So let's screw this first one in along the corner. And then you can see the overlap right here. And we'll just work our way down. The reason that I'm making a basket like this, instead of just attaching it to the bottom, because I'm worried about over time, the concrete kind of working at the metal and just cracking and having it seep out. So I think this is gonna be the safest way to create a basket of holding the soil, because I'm gonna put the landscape fabric right over top of this. We have that all connected as like a little basket. I'll lift to show you. 
And this is gonna be real nice. What we're gonna do next is just put that landscape fa fabric in and that's gonna make it so the soil can hold in there without draining out, but they're still gonna allow water to drain out the bottom so it's not just gonna go anaerobic by sitting in there the whole time. Now we're gonna go with the landscape fabric. This is 36 inches too, so I'm just gonna do the same thing where I'm gonna put it up about four inches and then just overlap it a little bit. Now we're gonna attach this landscape fabric and I've just got this staple gun here and I got half inch staples that I'm gonna be using. All right, we got this all lined up. Now I'm just gonna start in this corner here. Just gonna staple it in. Now we got the landscape fabric and everything down there. We're gonna start attaching the top part. And this part is important because we wanna make sure we're attaching this top part on the far north side. So the highest part has to be on the north side because we get our sun sitting in the south. We don't wanna make sure we're shading any of the bed. We don't wanna be shading any of our plants. Now we're gonna take one of our scrap two by tens. We're gonna put it up like this to attach these two pieces together, the two boxes. We're gonna make it flush at the top so that when we screw our cap, this will also be able to screw right down into the cap. So we'll use, have like a double use out of this. We, we're not actually wasting anything too because this is our scrap. So first I'm just gonna attach this top, bo top part and then I'll attach it to the bottom part. Now I wanna make sure this outside is flush. So I'm not gonna go crazy sinking these screws in because I have to work against the mesh just a little bit. There we go. That looks nice just like that. Now that top part is connected. We're gonna do the same exact thing on the other side. I have those braces in the back here. I ended up going with three and they're all flush at the top so that it'll fit the cap perfectly. Now I need to put something down here so that when I put the cap on, I have something to screw to. So I'm gonna put one here one here and one here and then for this one here i'll just be able to screw it from the back i'll show you so i'm just gonna get this flush pre-drill it and then connect it and i'll do the same thing on the other sides now let's just take these cap pieces and uh just attach them pre-drill them and attach them right to the top just like this so we're gonna make sure they're as flush as we can get them they should be perfect sized And then I'm not worried about this whole bed moving. Once I'm finished and I fill it with soil and stuff, it's gonna be so heavy that it's not gonna be shifting at all. So we'll do the same thing for all the rest. Then we'll take this centerpiece. It should fit perfect if our math is good. There you go, slides in nice. Then we'll just put, for now, we'll just put a screw in the center. And I'll do the same on all the rest. There we go, final screw in. I'm real happy with the way it came out. Now you can see we've got this terrace raised bed, two sections, two foot long by four foot long. So we can do the square foot gardening in here too. And I love these caps at the top. I think it makes a huge difference. Now what I'm going to do is uh, fill this with some soil. And if you want with this deeper bed right here, you can fill some sticks and just compost at the bottom to save space. But the reason I wanted this terrace style is because if you're going to just grow on concrete, then some of the deep rooted vegetables won't do that well with only about 10 inches of soil. But up here you can grow different kinds of things that like a deeper soil, some carrots and any of that kind of stuff that like deep soil. So that's the idea with this. So I think we can get a lot of utilization out of it. Almost got this all filled. And if you want to know what soil I used, I just made my own soil. And I showed you guys how I did that and how to start a container garden. So it's basically all filled up. I just need to make one more mixture of it. I'm real happy with the way it came out. And I think it's just gonna, it's gonna grow a lot of food. I'm getting all this extra space growing on the patio that I've never even had before. So let me just show you the dimensions on the inside, how it came out. Just like we wanted, we wanted two feet on the inside. So we've got that nice exactly two feet there. And then we wanted four feet as the width. So the perfect four feet like that. So we can set this up in the uh, square foot guarding method, which is what we're gonna do. And we've got these nice sides where we can just sit, reach in, plant anything we want. And I think it's just a super convenient way to do it. One thing I forgot to mention that I didn't show actually was you're gonna wanna make sure this whole bed is level. So we went through and leveled this whole thing, or I did, before I actually filled it with the soil. So just make sure that your bed is level. And that's one of the reasons that I have to put the cloth and the landscape fabric at the bottom because my pad isn't perfectly level. So now I'm not gonna have any soil just draining out when I'm watering it. That's today's video, growers. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. I hope you take the time to build your own raised bed, even if it's on a patio like this. You know, it's gonna be so great to be able to grow this food in the spot that I've never grown before. A couple of things we wanna make sure is that the highest part is on the north side 
and it's gonna be nice planting all of our deep rooted crops here and some of our more shallow rooted crops here like our lettuces and stuff. So if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, share with your friends. Don't forget to check out the merch down low. And remember, whenever you're on Amazon, start your shopping with our Amazon affiliate link. Talk and James, we'll be back at you again real soon. We 